Joe Rodriguez here, and this is the third episode of St. Joseph Chat, SJC. And today's guest is Jonathan Franco, Jonathan the Beloved. And welcome, Jonathan. Thank you so much for coming on here. It's such an honor to have you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. So, Jonathan, you have your own YouTube channel, His Holy Name. Uh, before we get into St. Joseph, would you be willing to tell us a little bit about your channel? Well, His Holy Name is about uh, the devotion to the Holy Face, um, given in the 19th century, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, um, given to Sister Marie de Saint-Pierre um, in France. And uh, in my YouTube channel, we usually, or I share about the devotion to the Holy Face, the messages given um, to Sister Marie by our Lord. Um, it's a beautiful devotion. I really encourage people to get to know it better. I usually try to also share videos in Spanish, um, do that many other devotion. It isn't well known in Spanish yet. Um, it's only in English and French. So I try to translate the messages into Spanish, hoping it would reach many people, especially um, I'm from Mexico, so especially I want to share it with my country, my brothers and sisters from Mexico. Well, that's beautiful. It definitely is an important devotion to have. And uh, when I post this video, I will upload the link so people can visit that. I encourage you all, Spanish or English, to visit his page, like it, subscribe to it. Let's uh, keep promoting our Lord. What is your earliest memory of St. Joseph? It was about in the year 2020 during the pandemic, um, is when I had, I mean, Father Joseph has always been in my life, but I think that's the year when I got to know him better or started to to know him in a much deeper sense. Um, but I think Father Joseph has always been there just as our Blessed Mother and our Lord. And I think he's not too far away either, very close to them. So I believe if they're close to me, then he's really close as well. Um, so yeah, I would say like around a few years ago, not too long ago, um, I would usually, you know, uh, many other people tend to just look at Our Lady and Our Lord, and sometimes we don't see him or see Father Joseph, um, or pay attention to him rather than, but I would say, yeah, like around uh, the year 2020 is when I started to, to get to know him much more. And so how have you incorporated him into your spiritual life since getting to know him? Like, what are some ways that you honor him or any favorite devotions? I think how it all started was um, I am in love with the Carmelite spirituality. And Mother Teresa of Avila, she, I think she's a, she's a great promoter during her time. And I think she still is in heaven. I mean, she's the one that kind of pushed me to getting or rather presented me Father Joseph. Um, and it's through her writings that, that I got to, or started, um, having the, the need to know him more, uh, like who is this great, um, saint and from her writings, when I become, I started to, from her writings, I started to, um, go to him and trust him many things, ask for his intercession. Um, my favorite devotion concerning Father Joseph would have to be his uh, his seven sorrows and joys. I think meditating upon them is just a beautiful way. Um, and also like in all of all of his sorrows and pains, I mean sorrows and joys, he he understands or it's like a certain type of grace that I can ask him through his sorrows and through his joys. So I enjoy that um that devotion particularly, even though sometimes it's not like all his seven sorrows and joys in in one day, but sometimes I do one each each day of the week, ending a whole week is is all his sorrows and all his joys. Um, but yeah, I would say that was that would be the devotion that I prefer to go to, as well as uh, in Spanish it's called the Trentena, which is the the thirty day prayer to Saint Joseph. Also, that one um is a beautiful beautiful devotion that i have towards him and just the simple prayers just asking him the simple things using my own words also i think that's that's another way 
Do you know the Seven Sorrows and Joys by heart? <laughs> okay. Um, Let's see I usually, what you can I, do. It. Okay, I usually have it like um, I go like from scenarios. That's how mm -hmm. I remember them. Yeah. So if first it would be um, the sorrow of him leaving Our Lady or thinking of leaving Our Lady, the doubt, yeah. and then the Annunciation to St. Joseph. Okay, and the second one would be um, would be seeing Jesus born in 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 poorness or in the stable, like in Bethlehem, and the joy of seeing that great night, everything that happened during that night, and then from there, if I'm not mistaken, it would be uh, the presentation of our Lord to His joy. I think uh, with with. Saint Anne, not not a Saint Anne. Is this Simeon? And then the sorrows, I think, would be uh, seeing the child Jesus, um, his circumcision, um, shedding his blood. I think that's the third one. And then the fourth would be, is it the flight? I'm not sure if it's the flight. Is it the circumcision uh, separate from the presentation? Because he was circumcised sure. first, so the shedding of his blood, and the joy yeah. would be the pronunciation of the holy name of Jesus. And then it would be Simeon's prophecy would be the sorrow. They're the two would separate. Be, I, yeah. A lot of people okay. group them together, though. I do, too, sometimes. But yeah. But otherwise, yeah, you're going to yeah. not have enough sorrows and joys. Because I thought, like, okay, his sorrow is seeing our Lord uh, shed his blood his circumcision. And I thought, okay, the joy is of Simeon and the prophetess being our Lord. And But it is true because his sorrow is of hearing the prophecy from Simeon and what Our Lady and Our Lord would have to be, would have to suffer and he might not be there. Um, so yeah, there's two, there are two separate ones. Thank Sorry you for, you for reminding me. No, no, thank you for reminding me. Because I usually do get them confused sometimes. Yeah. And then it would be in the flights, like everything he happened through the journey through Egypt and the years he lived there. But at the same time, the joy of being with, uh, I mean, the toddling of the idols would be one of his joys. And then, and the years he spent with Mary's company and our Lord. And then it would be coming back from Egypt or leaving Egypt. And his sorrow would be uh, the son of, um, how do you say his name? Yes, the son of Herod. That Archaeus. would be his sorrow. Yeah. Because I usually do it in Spanish, so I'm thinking, how do you say their name in English, you know? <laughs> uh, and then, but then he would be consoled to go to Nazareth and live the life he lived there with um, Jesus and Mary. And then it would be losing the child Jesus in the temple. Um, and then finding him uh, at the third day. So I just love each one of his sorrows and joys because each one is like, um, for example, every time I, I always think of the sorrow he felt when he lost uh, Jesus and the joy he felt when he found him. I always think of my brethren like who are dying in this moment. And I always, um, how do you say, I always ask him through this sorrow like you know how i felt to lose jesus just for a few days please intercede that my brothers don't lose him eternally forever with no way to to get back with him so i like through that through that sorrow and through that joy i always ask him for that and then i say just as you you found that joy in finding him again may our brothers find or partake in that same joy as you did to finding Jesus and to be with him eternally. So his sorrows and joys are always um, beautiful. Like every sorrow is and, and joy is like, I ask for different people, different graces or virtues, etc. And And I enjoy very much that devotion. That's beautiful. Yeah, you can almost dedicate each uh, mystery or sorrow and joy for a particular cause. I know that when I when I pray that one, the loss of Jesus in the temple and the finding of him. Um, I pray more literally. I offer it for people whose children have gone missing, missing children, and, you know, the sorrow that they, the parents must feel and all that. But it also can translate into the spiritual realm, like you just said, you know, that our brethren 
find Christ, you know, first seek him and find him, you know, because he's there waiting for us. He's in our father's house. So we know exactly where he is. Earlier, you mentioned Father Joseph and as a term of endearment for our, our saint. And I have to say that's pretty unique because I've never heard anyone call him Father Joseph except for perhaps Teresa Davila. Uh, I'm not sure, but what, what brought on that that beautiful, affectionate term that you use so regularly and so easily with St. Joseph? I would always have, I always have this profound respect and love towards him. But I think it all became in the same year, like around the 20, 2020s, um, that it, it came out because during that time, uh, my father passed away. So during that time, the 5th of December, if I'm not mistaken, um, my father passed away and me and my family were united, spending the time together and grieving the loss of my dad. And my family and I, well, our life is of taking care of the cattle and living in the fields um, in Mexico. So one day, if I'm not mistaken, it was the 7th, um, I found myself with the cattle in the fields. I was like, taking care of them. Um, and I heard this like interior voice, like um, like this inner voice. They just said, uh, my father will be your father too, will be now your father. And from that moment on, I took him literally as my father. Um, that's why I always add Father Joseph. Because even though St. Joseph, for me, it, it's not wrong. It's it's with profound respect. But for me, calling him Father is making him more present in my life, making him very close to me, reminding me that he's very close to me, and reminding me as well to to have confidence in him, to trust him, to, to go to him, um, for advice, for help, for his intercession, etc. So for me, calling him Father Joseph is just making him, uh, making him closer to me, but also reminding me that he is my father, but also reminding me of this great grace that the Lord granted me. I always say, he didn't just want to give me his mother, he gave me also his father. And from that moment on is, is when I started calling him Father Joseph. And he has helped me in so many needs in all sorts of ways. If it's spiritual, it's uh, temporal. Um, you mentioned St. Teresa of Avila, Mother Teresa, and this famous quote where she says that St. Joseph uh, secures in every kind of necessity and in all sorts. And I was meditating upon, upon the, that quote uh, a while ago. And I was like, yeah, he, he secures in everything because St. Joseph is a father and the father does not limit itself to just one thing. He helps in all needs. Yeah. And us being little children that we need, help in everything he helps in every sorts of of grace of every every aspect you know if it's spiritual or temporal and when she said that i i just said well yeah because he's a father because if you if you don't mind if you remember when you were little we would think our fathers would do everything they were plumbers they would do this they would fix that they could do anything Literally, our spiritual father is the same. He intercedes in all sorts of ways, not just uh, limited himself to just, for example, the needs of fatherhood. No, he helps in all sorts of needs, uh, healing, graces, all sorts of needs. He intercedes because he is indeed a father, and a father helps his son in all sorts of ways. So that's just a part of why I also call him father. And it, to me, it's very special to call him father. Um, he is truly, truly, truly my father in all sorts of ways. And, and just, it's just a, a loving name that I call him Father Joseph, Father Joseph. That's remarkable. And people are always saying you need to have a personal relationship with Jesus. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior? And of course, we as Catholics, we see Jesus as like, a brother figure sometimes, you know, we have God the Father, Christ yes. our brother. So if he's our brother, you know, who's our mother, his mother, who's our father, his father. If we truly are having a personal relationship with our Lord, that extends to his parents as well, because, you know, it's that's a personal intimacy that we have, which is remarkable. Um, there's a quote I just want to read real quick. 
Okay. Regarding the fatherhood of Joseph, something that prompted me, it's from the apparitions of Our Lady of America. And this is what he told the nun, Sister Mary uh, Mildred Noisel. Uh, he says, All fatherhood is blessed in me, whom the Eternal Father chose as his representative on earth. Virgin Father of his own divine Son, my spiritual fatherhood extends to all of God's children. I watch over them with great love. And so if we uh, are to take those apparitions as legitimate, right there, St. Joseph tells us he is our father too. And what a comforting thought that is. And especially in this day and age, you know, when things are crazy, we need a good father figure. So mm -hmm. that's good. It's, it's wonderful that you have that relationship with them. So I have another question. Do you, you said that he helped in all needs. Um, that kind of segues into his litany, because in his litany, he's got tons of titles, which are also some of his offices. You know, he's, you know, a uh, patron or protector of virgins, you know, head of the house, uh, head of the Holy Family, you know, terror of demons, patron of the dying. He, he's in charge of so many different things. Out of his litany, what would be your one favorite title and why? I like his, I love his litanies, um, uh, especially, for example, Terra of Demon, uh, Protector of Holy Church, uh, Patron of the Dying. But I think um, out of all of them, I think two of them um, stood out to me, which would be uh, the Spouse of the Mother of God and the Foster Father of the Son of God. Now, the names, may, many would say, okay, like, for example, the name doesn't stand out too much, um, for example, as Terror of Demons would. But to me, these two uh, say so much about Father Joseph. Like, there is this quote I read one time where it says, tell me what you love and I'll tell you who you are. And on, on, on sacred scripture, there isn't too much about Father Joseph. But following this quote, um, who is it that jo St. Joseph, Father Joseph loves than Jesus and Mary? So to me, to get to know Father Joseph, which is, it's, it's all like tangled up or they're all united. We usually say, go to Jesus through Mary and Joseph. But in this case, I would say, to understand or know Joseph, go to Jesus and Mary. So it's like, they're all united. And these two titles are just it just um i feel like um i don't know how you would say it in english uh the study of mary uh, i don't know how you say it in english mariology mariology and then the study of christ would be christology yes so i think Christology. yeah i think to add to josephology would be to study or get to know better mariology and christology um, because of these two titles that St. Joseph has. And thinking about that quote, um, tell me who you love or what you love, and I'll tell you who you are. And, and for example, if we go to our Blessed Mother, Mariology, we go to St. Louis de Montfort, great Mariologist, great saint, uh, wrote amazing books, The Consecration Jesus Through Mary, he says that a mother cannot be a mother just of the head, but of the body as well. Because if he, if she's just the mother of the head, that would be an abomination. So she can't be a mother. A mother can't be just the mother of a head, but the whole body. Mary is mother of the head, being Christ, but is also mother of the body, being the church. It could be said the same thing about Father Joseph. Father Joseph is mm -hmm. father, not just of the head, but of the body. So Father Joseph is both father of Christ and is father to the church, to each one of us personally, since we are the church. So it's like things like this, that it is, where did we get this from our blessed mother? But we got to know more on St. Joseph, that he is a father, not just of Christ, but also a father spiritually to each one of us. Um for example, there's another way. Uh, St. Alphonsus the Glory says, I believe in the glories of Mary. He mentions that um, no one has ever loved or will love or loves more uh, our Lord than Our Lady. Um, so that after our Lord, no one loves us more and wishes our salvation than Our Lady. 
we could take that to St. Joseph that after Our Lady, there is no one who loves more, um, better, perfectly our Lord than St. Joseph. So after Our Lady, there is no one else who loves us more and wishes the best for us and our salvation than Father Joseph. So it's like from these two litanies, it just moves me that by knowing Our Lady, knowing Our Lord, I will also get to know St. Joseph in a deeper sense. Um, and there's much more, I believe, out there. There's much more we will learn uh, as the days go by in the future. More people will know on St. Joseph, on Father Joseph. And that would be great. That would be a huge feast both in heaven and on earth when St. Joseph is better known uh, and more loved. And in that way, God more glorified. So, yeah, those two litanies are, mm, I think, the favorite ones or that speak most out to me. And the rest of the litanies will come added to these two um, because they all are St. Joseph. They all stem from his office as father and husband. If he was not the spouse of Our Lady, he would not become the father to our Lord, and he would not become the father or patron of anything. So yes, fatherhood and spousalhood are the two greatest offices, and um, it's, it's important that we pay attention to them. And then it's interesting you said uh, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary was one of your favorites because the first person I interviewed last time, that was one of his favorite titles too. I asked him the same question. And he also said spouse of the mother of God. Um, and so it's, it kind of blew me away that you just said the same thing as him. So there, there's something special there, obviously. There's confirmation. So something a little less theological. If you could have lunch with St. Joseph, what would you have to eat? A lunch with Father Joseph. I think anything that is warm and hand handmade by Our Lady. If Our Lady is doing it, I will eat anything Our Lady is doing it. You know, it just I just imagine um, helping Father Joseph in the carpentry and then coming home to to a feast uh, with food made by Our Lady. I think I would eat that. It would be amazing just to share the table with them and and eat with them. So yeah, I think. I would eat that. I would eat what Our Lady makes. And it's going to be good. It's going to be full of love and sweetness and dedication. And yeah. I mean, I just, I think that would just blow me away. So you're at the table with them and you're eating. If you could ask him one question that he would have to answer, what would you ask him? It depends what time would this be. But let's say it's after uh, the finding of Jesus in the temple. Um, I would ask him if he could recall everything from meeting our ladies and his enunciation of being part of God's plan to that mo moment. Um, getting to know how was that night in the nativity of our Lord, um, the presentation, the circumcision, just not out of like curiosity. But rather, because I would be like, if you would tell me, I know that I would even fall more in love to Our Lady and Our Lord. Just by him telling you, okay, well, um, Our Lord, he was born, and I wrapped him in 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 my tunic, and I laid him, and you know those kind of details. I think I would just be blown away with with more love and love for Our Lord and Our Lady. I think that's what I would ask him if he could recall every details or, or little details concerning um our lord and our lady and and the time they spend together yeah i think that i would ask him that so basically to tell you his story with mary and jesus through his perspective and how he experienced those things yes exactly that's beautiful i wasn't expecting that that's a good answer that's that's remarkable so after having talked about father joseph why is he important to you and why do you think he's important to the world at this point in time? Why is he important to me personally? I think um, his example and the model he gives me, especially uh, his example of purity and chastity, his humility and his, uh, his life of prayer. I think that is what speaks to me, his, his virtuous life. Um, so I think that... Um, I think for for me, that's what speaks out to me, his example, because uh, it's things that we we need, um, not just not not just me personally, 
but also the world as well. Um, in these times, uh, we need purity, we need chastity, we need to know how to pray. And, and Mother Teresa says, if you don't know who, if you don't know how to pray, go to St. Joseph and he'll teach you how to pray. So for me, I think that's very important these times because if we don't pray, if we don't ask for the graces, I don't know what we're going to do without them. Um, so I think St. Joseph is very important in these times because of that, not just for me, but for the world is his example, his model, his powerful intercession, um, but also his protection. I would say also his protection, um, just as he protected um, the child Jesus from deadly peril, as that prayer says. Um, I think he also, we need him in these times to protect us um, from the things that threaten us in, in the church, um, the church in, in, in particular, as I mean. Um, but yeah, I think that's why he's so important today. It's it's he his example is just contrary to what the world is teaching today. Um, to way to live a pure life, to live a chaste life, uh, to um take care of your virginity, to to be a good father, um, to know how to pray, to live a virtuous life, to live a life of holiness. So I think St. Joseph is very much needed in these times. And I am hoping to see this go further and further. Uh, many people, for me, it would be a dream. I always say, if I don't see it here, I hope to see it in heaven, where St. Joseph is more known, more loved, more honored. Um, in his feast, his solemnity, is, is it's a solemnity, but I wish I could see it like many people celebrating his solemnity throughout the world, um, excited for the day of his solemnity. So I think um, I'm just hoping for that as well. I'm hoping for many people to know, to love and to cherish um, this great saint, this powerful saint, but this great father, especially um, this great father, um, spiritual father. So yeah, I think that's, that's why he's important in these times. Unfortunately, he is, many people don't know him yet. Um, or having gone into a deeper uh, relationship with him. So um, I'm hoping that this goes further away and people will, there won't be a house that they do not know who Father Joseph is, who Saint Joseph is, and his great powerful intercession and his great love for Our Lady and Our Lord. Um, and and yeah, I think I think that's why he's important in these times. So Jonathan, you quoted from a prayer to the O Blessed Joseph, you quoted that may Saint Joseph save us from deadly peril, just as he did the child Jesus. And that prayer to the O Blessed Joseph, which happens to be the name of my apostolate, is also the prayer given to us by Pope Leo the Thirteenth. For those of you out there who don't know, Leo the Thirteenth gave us this prayer in the encyclical Quam Quam Pluris, in which he encouraged devotion to Saint Joseph. He wrote that prayer to be attached to the recitation of the rosary uh, at the end. And the prayer is indulgence. And he originally asked people to pray it in the month of October. Now, given this day and age, how crazy things are, I think it would be very edifying if we added it to every rosary we prayed. Again, it is indulgence. It's endorsed by the church. And it's only natural that we would go to him after Our Lady. So... I encourage you all, all of you to pray that prayer to the O Blessed Joseph. And uh, I guess that's about it. So, Jonathan, thank you so very much for taking the time to speak with me and whoever's watching this about St. Joseph. I think the more we talk about him, the more he will be known. Um, we just got to get him out there. What you've said today definitely will be contributing to the faith of others. So I'm very grateful to you. And thank you so much. For making the time oh thank you for having me it was it was an honor to be here i was honored to be here and it's just um talking about father joseph is just an amazing grace um i'm hoping it would reach many people um the people that need to hear it and that it would help them in a way for me it would be just an amazing grace that people get to know him more love him and in that way get to know and love our lord and our lady as well Amen. All right, everyone. Well, God bless you and St. Joseph smile upon you.